Welcome to the program. I'm your host, Neil Howard. Our guest is Dr. Ted Love. He's CEO of Global Blood Therapeutics Incorporated, and he's joining us here on the program to talk about sickle cell disease. He's also going to talk about some uh, current developments in treatment and, uh, well, all things sickle cell. Thank you so much for joining us here on the program today, Dr. Love. Thank you. It's a pleasure to be here. Thank you. Well, um, let's, uh, let's jump right in. Uh, first, a brief background about, uh, about yourself. What uh, led you into this uh, area of research? Well, I'm a physician uh, by training, actually a cardiologist, and uh, during my training, one of the most disappointing areas of medicine that I uh, encountered was actually treating sickle cell patients when I was in New Haven at Yale and later when I was at, the, at Harvard at the Mass General. And I eventually left academic medicine and went to Genentech where I focused on making, uh, quite frankly, in retrospect, many drugs uh, for a variety of diseases, but never worked on sickle cell. And um, I was uh, approached now about uh, three and a half years ago uh, with, uh, from, from venture group, a venture group that was focused on sickle cell disease. And I just thought it was uh, a super attractive thing to do, to uh, put the rest of my career, the end of my career, focused on the disease uh, of African-Americans. I'm African-American that really had been ignored and that needed uh, desperately need solutions. So that, that's how I got here. So what is sickle cell disease? So sickle cell disease is a genetic disorder. In other words, people get it because they have a mutation, uh, an abnormality uh, in one of the genes uh, in their body. In this case, it's a gene uh, a defect in hemoglobin, and hemoglobin is the protein inside of our red cells which picks up oxygen in the lungs uh, for our blood and drops it off in our tissues. So that's how we are able to get good oxygen uh, to our tissues. Unfortunately, individuals with sickle cell disease have a very small, in fact, a single amino acid uh, change in their hemoglobin, and that causes their hemoglobin to come out of solution, like sugar uh, falling out of solution, and form rods, and these rods physically deform the red cell like putting a sword inside of a balloon. And now these sickle cells can't uh, deform, they can't, they're no longer flexible. And in fact, what they do is they rupture, uh, which gives you the anemia, and they also clog up our blood vessels, which gives you the pain and the organ failure, and unfortunately, the premature death. So this is a, a very egregious problem but it's really caused by a simple uh, mutation uh, that wreaks great havoc on these patients. So why is this mutation um, disproportionately affecting African Americans? Huh. It's a great question. Um, it probably has to do, in fact, we're quite confident, it has to do with malaria. Um, malaria, as you know, is a disease of an infection of a parasite. And these parasites uh, in order to survive in us, have to reside in the red blood cell for a while. And one of the things that must have happened is that uh, a mutation occurred in hemoglobin, and it turned out that because that mutation destabilized the red cell, it actually was protective against malaria. So in regions where malaria was very common, the malaria was actually selecting out for more and more people who had this mutation. Um, so it was a, it, it's really a protective advantage against malaria. If you get one abnormal gene, uh, you really aren't sick, but you're protected from malaria. Unfortunately, if you get two abnormal genes uh, from both of your parents, uh, then you have sickle cell disease. Okay. Now, you mentioned pain and um, premature death. What does a typical uh, day for a, a person dealing with sickle cell look like as far as what they have got to go through? Well, the disease is quite episodic, uh, particularly initially, but over time, uh, patients get uh, the effect of accumulated lack of blood flow to their organs. So they get bones uh, which uh, uh, um, are in need of replacement and repair, so hip replacement shoulder replacements are very common. Um, obviously, if I put a tourniquet on your arm, you're going to develop a lot of pain. And uh, while um, but this is not a tourniquet, it's the same consequence. If you block a vessel 
uh, inside, you get lack of blood flow, so people get pain. Uh, and, uh, and over time, your organs start to fail. You get kidney failure. You get liver failure. You can start to get heart failure because no organ is spared uh, from this lack of blood flow. So they have uh, fatigue. They have pain. Uh, they have organ failure. Um, and they typically, unfortunately, uh, don't survive uh, beyond uh, the mid-40s. Briefly describe what you and uh, your team there at Global Blood Therapeutics work on. So the, the thing that really got me very excited about uh, Global Blood when this idea was first presented to me is that drugs which go after the fundamental underlying problem are our most effective drugs. And I'll give you an example. Um, we used to treat HIV with things like inhaled pentamidine to try to decrease infections. And while that worked, what really was the big breakthrough in HIV was killing the virus, killing the virus, and everything went away. In sickle cell disease, remember I said, the problem is this hemoglobin polymerizing, forming these chains. And if you could stop that, you should be able to correct the anemia. You should be able to correct the uh, inadequate oxygen delivery to tissue. Uh, and if you could really correct all of that, you might mitigate the pain. You might mitigate uh, the uh, organ failure. You, you might mitigate the fatigue. Uh, and, 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 and we hope you will mitigate uh, the, premature, um, uh, um, uh, the premature deaths. Uh, so we think that by going after the fundamental problem that we could have transformative outcomes. Uh, Dr. Love, with just a minute left, talk about this new drug that's currently in development, Voxelator. Um, talk about how it's going to uh, help uh, sickle cell patients. So Voxelator is a compound that we uh, um, uh, made here in our labs, and uh, the molecule literally binds to hemoglobin. And hemoglobin molecules, which have a 440 molecule attached to them, cannot polymerize. And we know that this polymerization process requires uh, a lot of deoxygenated sickle hemoglobin to make it work, and that if you could take away a little bit of that deoxygenated sickle hemoglobin, you would uh, slow this process down to maybe a point where it's clinically irrelevant. Uh, so what we're trying to do is give enough drug to bind to 20%, maybe 30% of the hemoglobin in these sickle cell patients, and we think that could translate into essentially reversing the process of polymerization, and we hope the consequences of the disease. And where can we go and learn more online? Uh, at our website. Uh, our company, again, is Global Blood Therapeutics. Uh, we have a website uh, that you can easily find by searching our name. Um, uh, www.gbt.com, I think, will also get you uh, to our website. We actually have a website for our HOPE study, H-O-P-E, uh, which is currently enrolling uh, in the United States and 14 other countries around the world uh, with the aim of getting this drug approved and on the market by 2020. Dr. Ted Love, thank you so much. It's been a pleasure. I'm hoping you'll come back and speak with us in the future as things develop. Thank you so much. Thank you. My, my pleasure. You've been listening to Health Professional Radio. I'm your host, Neil Howard. Transcripts and audio of this program are available at hpr.fm and healthprofessionalradio.com.au.